Hi, my name is Nick Collier. I also work for AHEAD, just like a couple of people this morning here. The thing I wanted to talk about today, along with my colleague Steve Aiello, is uh, the concept of self-healing data center. Um, I really want to focus on this because a lot of people are kind of moving beyond automated provisioning, automated cloud, and things like that. And they ask, well, what are the things I can do with vRealize Orchestrator next? You know, I've built this, this team around automation and orchestration. Well, what, what else can they do? And self-healing data center is one of these things that always sounds absolutely amazing, right? Like I've got this self-healing data center that's going to correct itself. But, but how do you actually do it? What's some of the approaches that we've taken? How do, how do you actually get started with this? And, and there's really two main ways that we've, we've gone about it. One being proactive healing. Uh, how do I schedule things to take effect in my data center at periodic periods of time? Uh, and then the more you know, exciting one is reactive healing. How do I respond to alerts from SCOM, SolarWinds, whatever it might be, um, and have those take action in Orchestrator? And then uh, I'm going to bring Steve on towards the end to talk about you know, what we can do inside the guest as well. You know, we talk about PowerShell DSC. We talk about Puppet Chef, uh, some of the things those, those tools can do as well. So let's get started with kind of vRealize Orchestrator. That's the focus. I, I respect there are a number of tools that can obviously do this kind of thing as well, but the, the focus here is around vRealize Orchestrator. Uh, and so the first one is uh, automating HA and DRS configurations in this example. So think about this. You're, you're a VMware admin. You did some work during the day, and you know, you've, you've kind of set DRS to partially automated. You turned off HA because you're doing something, and you forgot to turn it back on before you left. So how can I have a workflow just go and check that every day and remediate that. And to start with the goal in mind, my goal in this case is I want to make sure that ESXi clusters are checked every night to make sure HA and DRS are enabled. And, and there's plenty of other use cases you could use as well. Um, break it down. Then go and look at your HA settings. So let's go in and look. Okay, I want admission control set correctly. Now think about this. You know, a lot of people switch to percentage-based admission control. And you know, Duncan Appian has a huge blog on the reasons why. Um, but every time you add or remove a host from your cluster, those, those percentages have to now be adjusted. You know, if you've got eight hosts in your cluster, 10 hosts, how many hosts do you want to tolerate a failure for? Um, you've got to keep adjusting those percentages. So this workflow can, can help with that. Do you want to enable host monitoring? And then what are my DRS settings as well? Uh, is DRS set to fully automated? What's its, what's its level set at? One of the most important things I would say is look at other settings you're not going after. When you think of VMware, a lot of the way VMware does its API calls and things is in terms of specifications. So if you're creating a workflow now to go and adjust the cluster configuration specification, and you're just looking at HA and DRS settings, but you forget that you had anti-affinity and affinity rules in there as well, and you don't take those into account, you can create a workflow that's going to do your new cool thing, but you just removed your old thing. So just keep that in mind. Always think about the other things in that same construct that you're going to look at as well. So how do we go about building the workflow? So step one. You know, I want, to do, I want to do this for all my clusters in the environment. I want to check them and remediate them. Um, so I'm going to feed in my clusters. I'm going to run the corrective action for enabling HA and DRS. Uh, and then I'm just going to repeat that for every single cluster in my environment. And then I might schedule that workflow. So I could take the VRO workflow scheduler, set that to run, run every night at midnight if you want. And you know that, OK, if somebody forgot to set it or you added a host that day, everything's going to be remediated that night. And what does it look like from a JavaScript? And I haven't got all the JavaScript yet. And the blog, blog page will be up in a minute, and you can, you can grab it all from there. But first things first, uh, I want to calculate HA percentage um, for the number of hosts. So I write some script, get all, my, get all my host systems, calculate the percentage, come up with my percentage, how many hosts do I want to tolerate a failure for, store that in a variable, log it, what I tell everybody in VRO, just put as much system login in. You know, that doesn't write to a permanent file. That's just for you to kind of keep track of the workflows as they're running. And then the more exciting part, OK, well, now I want to run my corrective action. So turn on HA and DRS. So this is where I talked about you need a cluster configuration spec. So we set a variable, uh, var cluster config spec equals v new VC cluster configuration spec. So this is my vSphere cluster configuration specification now. And in there, there's two pieces, really, which is uh, you know, a, a DRS config and DAS config, DAS config being VMware's term for, for HA. Uh, then my next part of my script is I want to say I'm going to enable those. So I enable, you know, set the same thing, DAS config dot enabled equals true, DRS config enabled equals true. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of other settings that, you know, I talked about that, that would also go in there. And then this is the part I kind of mentioned. If you don't add this comma true at the end here, uh, you'll wipe out all your other settings in the cluster. So it's a very easy way to say I'll, that the, all the comma true is doing there is saying, I want to preserve all of my existing settings and I want to override these new settings that I'm actually accounting for, which uh, is critical when you do it. So what does it look like? And hopefully the video is not as blurry as it is on the, the screen here in the presentation. But uh, what you can see is I'm basically going in here and I'm unchecking D, uh, HA, I'm unchecking DRS, setting it to partially automated. 
still using the thick client in this uh, demo here. So that's unconfigured now. I'll just wait for the other one. And then now I'm just going to go and run this VRO workflow. And you'll see it just takes less than a second. Um, and that's basically hit every single cluster in my environment and told it, go and check my HA, is HA on or my DRS percentages, HA percentages and DRS on, um, all done. And then if you go straight back over to vSphere, you know, the results are just what you would see if you went into the UI in vSphere, um, re-enabled HA, uh, you know, adjusted your percentages or, you know, actually, uh, you know, set DRS back to fully automated. So once HA gets enabled here in a second, going to the cluster, we can see HA is back on. If we go to DRS, it's back to fully automated. And, and again, that could just happen automatically every, every night. You wouldn't even have to think about it. It would hit you know, as many clusters as you've got. It would, would take care of it. Now, the good thing is if nothing's changed, it's just going to verify it, check it. You can even just, if, you don't, if you're not comfortable saying, do it automatically for me, you can just go and check everything and have it send you an email with the results. It's, a, it's another way to go. So the more exciting part, well, how do I do automation in response to an event? Right? I could, those, those workflows are great, uh, the ones I just showed you for scheduling, adding data stores, checking capacity, doing routine things. But this is kind of the more exciting one. And, and start with the goal in mind here. So think of it this way. Don't, don't think of one specific one. I want to enable repeatable scripted actions in response to an SNMP trap. Um, and this is how I can go about this, breaking it down. I've got a vCenter alarm for a data store that's 95% full. I want to send that trap to vCenter Orchestrator. I'm going to create a workflow in there that knows what to do with it. And then I'm going to say run storage DRS, right? Maybe I just want VMware to rebalance my storage cluster right away, right? Storage DRS runs of the last recall six hours or every eight hours, uh, but now I can just trigger it immediately. So I get a data store alarm. I'm going to, you know, run storage DRS straight away. And then if maybe that, that isn't going to fix it for me, then I can actually just also go and add a data store from my storage array as well and add that to the, to the pool if I need to. So how do we achieve, it, achieve this? Uh, step number one, configure the SNMP trap receiver in vCenter Orchestrator. And we haven't got enough time to go through all of that right now, but there's a, these are the links that will kind of tell you how to do that. Second one is create a workflow which interprets your SNMP traps. So literally, this is a workflow that's just designed to say, do I know what to do with this alarm? Then the third one is create all your workflows for those repeatable actions that you want to do. So the best thing I tell people is take your operations playbook that you give your operations center at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, what they do in response to alerts, take that and turn every single one of those things into a, into a workflow, um, and you go from there. So what it looks like, um, step one of the workflow is just a script that interprets the traps that come in. Step two, a decision in VRO that says, does this trap contain something we know how to handle? If it does, run this workflow. If it doesn't know what to do with that alert, don't do anything. Wake the guy up at 2 o'clock in the morning, right? He's got to <laughs> still do his job. Um, and then the SDRS workflow, very basic. Um, you know, the SNMP trap from, say, um, vCenter comes in, and all it says is the data store name. It doesn't give me any more information than that. Um, so I want to search vCenter for a data store with the name, because I need the vCenter object for that data store now. And then check SDRS pods to see if they contain the data store object. Refresh storage recommendations. Simple as that. That's what I'm going to go through. And again, the, the script's available here on our, on our blogs if you want the, want the full details. And this is what it looks like. So in vRealize Orchestrate, a little bit of a different view. So if people just kind of use VRO for just running workflows, um, what you see here is you know, I'm clearing the logs here. And this is the SNMP trap receiver that you're looking at. Give it a second in the demo here, and it'll send an alarm over. So that's a data store alarm. You know, you can see it comes in pretty raw there. And if you go over to VRO, um, it's basically executed. In the demo here, it'll, it'll run again. We've got a couple of alarms that go through, and you'll see it just, uh, it just keeps running workflows in response to events. So give that a second. Or five. <laughs> there we go, another workflow again. And again, it's just taking alarms. And if we go over to storage DRS, all you would see is the timestamp updated there. But it shows that storage DRS just, just ran on the cluster. So this is the, uh, the cool part. What are the use cases that we've been working on, working with a lot of customers on? The big one is, well, what if my Windows C drive um, gets low at 2 o'clock in the morning, right? This could be logs filling up on the C drive, uh, or it could just be a genuine concern that you want to, you know, this is a mission-critical application, and you say, anytime the C drive gets, gets near full, I just want to auto-expand the disk. So I can just pass that alarm straight over to vRealize Orchestrator. It basically goes into the VMDK, expands the disk, you know, edit settings on the VM, expands the disk then logs into the Windows OS and obviously expands inside the guest OS as well. 
automatically adding CPUs and memory, been done many times before, very easy to do, right? You can just say CPU goes high on these web servers, either automatically add another web server if you're using things like VRA and you've got a service catalog for provisioning, um, or add CPUs and memory. Add in data stores on a schedule, very common. Set your watermarks when my data store capacity hits a certain amount. Go over to the storage array, add another data store, go over to VMware, add it, make sure it's in the right storage DRS pod. Um, and then the real, the real thing is really when you look at this is just decide what your trigger is and then what the workflows you want to execute. So if you just rinse and repeat that for every type of operational task you have, uh, you'll just end up with loads and loads of these that you, that you can use in your environment. So I'm going to hand over to Steve now. He's going to come up and talk a little bit about you know, in-guest healing and a little bit more about kind of PowerShell DSC. Thank you very much, Nick. So I'm going to do a, a very brief overview of DSC. There was another talk uh, earlier today. Um, so just quick sort of what you can do and, and how it functions. So PowerShell DSC, it has quite a, a wide range of things that it can do for you. It can install, remove Windows roles and features, which is obviously very beneficial. It can manage registry settings, things of that nature. It can manage uh, processes, services. The big thing is it can install custom applications, MSIs, executables, as long as you can install them silently. It can run other PowerShell scripts. Um, it can discover and manage the state of a current system. So that's really powerful when you want to deploy something, but you also want to manage it and keep it in that known good state. Um, one caveat which DSC cannot do natively, it cannot manage NTFS permissions. So let's say if you have an example, you're trying to provision out IIS, you're going to take a package from a code repository, you're going to put it down, and then you need to modify the NTFS permissions in a web directory. There's actually another little um, sort of PowerShell tool that you'll need to use, and you can get it there, NTFS security at codeplex.com. It's very useful, but you can actually use PowerShell DSC to push that down to the target system and then manage it that way. So there's a couple different modules that you can have or a couple different ways that you can use PowerShell DSC. And if you're just getting started, basically you can run get DSC resource, right? So DSC can manage all these things, your files, archives, it can package and archive a system, it can manage your groups, logs, all of those types of uh, environment variables that you may want to work with. So if you're familiar with other auto automation orchestration tools, this sort of syntax might be pretty familiar to you. Um, you can start off very easily where you can say, okay, I have a node, in this case it's server one, or you could have a group of nodes, or you could have a, a variable, an array of, of nodes that you want to apply this to, and then you will say, I'm going to declare that on all of these nodes, or one node, or whatever it may be, that I want my web server, um, and it's, there's an important piece there, why we're just calling it web server, um, I want that to be present. Right, So um, I know that's familiar to people who do orchestration automation. And then the same thing, you know, we can start to get into a little bit more of an advanced feature. You can say, all right, I have a directory right, where my, my IIS files are going to be, and I'm going to copy them from this source repository. I'm going to push them down, in this case, to C, INEP, pub, www.root. But yet, I want that only to happen if the dependency of having IIS is met. So you can start to build out these branches and dependency mapping. So it, it becomes a very powerful system. And then again, you can use all of the other PowerShell tools to manage NTFS permissions and things like that. So um, one thing that I found very helpful when going through, and I'm not affiliated with this book, but if you're just getting started, um, Windows PowerShell Desired State Configuration Revealed. Um, in my experience, if you're, you don't have any experience with DSC, you can start getting up and running. In about 24 hours, I was able to start provisioning in mass, um, pulling down code from repositories. Um, there's two different ways that you can sort of work with this. One, there's a push and there's a pull method. Um, the pull method is a lot more scalable because it runs over a web server and you can either do HTTP or HTTPS. Uh, the push method is basically from any SMB share. Uh, it's great for smaller shops, uh, but absolutely, I would definitely check it out. Um, it will sort of give you that end-to-end -end solution, have Nick's uh, orchestrator, and then something like PowerShell DSC or Puppet or Chef on the back end. So thank you very much.